innovation is different than invention. We do have some patents and whatnot, but as a rule, those patents go to our customers. Innovation is to try and figure out how there's something that's existing can be modified and put into something else that's totally unrelated. That transfer of technology, that's what's important about benchmarking. But Monroe has a, we have a philosophy at Monroe, and that's to see what everyone else has seen. Like, people watched birds for a long, long time. Everybody wanted to fly. But to make it fly, you had to think differently than everyone else has thought. Those wings don't flap. They don't have any feathers on the wings. Everything is different on an airplane, but it achieves the same goal. That's what everybody that we work with, that's the first thing we try and tell them. How you want to get the job done is probably wrong because you're using traditional methods. You have to see what everyone else has seen, but you have to think differently than everyone else has thought. A few minutes ago, we were talking about cell phones. And, uh, and uh, you know, the, in, the, the invention and whatnot that has to go into cell phones. Right now, we have every cell phone on the planet that's worth anything torn apart at our facility right now. Apple, Samsung, I don't care whose it is, for our customer, again, who's Chinese, but all mapped out, all figured out, how do we take the best of best from each <coughs> one of these different other cell phones and figure out how to innovate our way into something new that'll be lighter, cost less, easier manufacturability with more features and less cost. That's what ultimately has to happen. That's why benchmarking is kind of important. DFM, in the beginning, started with benchmarking. Those are my two charts. They come from 1982. How many people were not born in 1982? Right. This is kind of like a young audience. So I'm making these charts in 1982, and you're just a gleam in someone's eye. Okay, so anyway, what this was, was in 1982, Ford Motor Company was going on a business. The Japanese came in. They had lower costs. They had better quality. They, they were dominating everything. They bought up everything. Hmm, isn't it kind of like what we got right now with the Chinese? The Chinese are buying everything. Everything is made in China. Everything was made in Japan. Everybody gets their turn, everybody. So the first thing that I, I kind of like uh, in the way of new technology is 3D circuit boards. I, I don't know why we have to have flat circuit boards. I, I don't get it at all. So I want a circuit board, in this case it's round, or I want one that looks like this one here that fits into the corner of a product, or I want this one that kind of like follows the contour of a product. Why can't I have this all the time? We have a, we have a little um, additive manufacturing machine. We, don't, we can't do this yet, but this is the future. Fuel cells. Um, we're hopefully going to get a Toyota Mirai fuel cell, and we're going to tear it apart just like we tear apart Barty's, uh, sorry, batteries and motors and everything else. And when we get done, we'll understand every feature, every function, every bit, every part will be costed and analyzed. And when we get done, a lot of people are going to be very interested in how that works because Toyota's fuel cell kicks the daylights out of everybody else's. International, Ballard, nobody's got one like this. Again, we go back to that carbon fiber thing. But what's the, what's the big problem with carbon fiber? What, what, what is it that we don't like about carbon fiber? What's that? Hard to fix. Hard to, it's, actually, it's a piece of cake to fix, but uh, with automotive stuff. Now, nobody, nobody wants it because it's black. It's always black. You're going to have any car you want except it's going to be colored black. So, so what, happens if, uh, what happens if somebody does this? Next one. Oh, uh, there's a new new fiber that's going to drop it. We don't ha we don't have to use carbon fiber anymore. Um, we're actually looking at this uh, carbon hemp fiber, which actually is way cheaper. It's now in the same price range as uh, what you'd see for aluminum. Next one. But what happens if we got colored carbon fiber, like white? It's black over here, but it's real white carbon fiber. I can have any color I want. That is a big difference. That makes a big difference to everybody because now I can make an exoskeleton car. I don't have to have the inner structure. I can make the whole car strong enough so that I don't need a whole lot of extra weight. I don't need that body in white. I'm going to have an exoskeleton car where the fenders are actually the structure. That makes a big, big difference. Next one. 
For those aircraft guys, how many of you know about the Flexus wing? A couple of you? Flexus and Monroe work together on a lot of different projects. We didn't work together on that one, but NASA, uh, NASA funded this. This doesn't have any, uh, there's no breaks between the flaps and the slats and the ailerons or the rudder or the elevators or anything else that moves on an airplane. Nothing, no drag, no whistling. Everything is nice and smooth, it's one piece. This is the future. Okay, so um, how many people know what covetic aluminum is? It's nano impregnated aluminum. So this is 7075 aluminum uh, that's been turned into, uh, into uh, uh, covetic uh, aluminum. And in the center there is a 45 slug, okay? And if you're in the front, you can see that it's jacketed. It means it's got copper around it. And that should have just zipped right through this chunk of a quarter inch aluminum like a, like a hot knife through butter. But it didn't, it caught it. And when I get done, if I don't like the product or I have to recycle a product, I melt the product back down. And when I melt it down, it's still 7075. And it's still got the carbon nanofilaments inside of it. It never changes. The guys in NASA and the Department of Defense are calling this an immortal material. Immortal. It doesn't change. It may have been aluminum before, but it's now a new material and it's never going to change again. It'll never go back to aluminum and bits and pieces or alloys. It's always going to be 7075. 